Starting when I was in mid-elementary school, I started taking piano lessons from a wonderful teacher named Peggy, and I took lessons from her for 10 years. So for 10 years straight, I was at her house every single week for my lesson, and she helped instill in me my love of playing the piano and my adoration for music, but also she became a dear friend and mentor in my life. Every week I would go and we'd catch up about what was happening in my world. I would tell her about school and church and my friends. And in high school, I would tell her all about my woes with dating and heartache. And she was just so great to listen. But then she was also an incredible encourager. I mean, she just would remind me of who I was. She would smile and remind me, Carly, you are doing great. You're doing well. I see this in you. And, and that meant so much to me to have her in my life speaking those words of encouragement. And I think about that with Pentecost Sunday, that there is this beautiful story of encouragement when we put ourselves in the shoes of the people in the upper room. Let's read in Acts chapter 2. It says that they were all gathered in one place and then suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And so when we put ourselves in the shoes of the people, you know, everyone could hear the rushing wind. They, they could hear that. They could probably even sense that. But when the tongues of fire appeared on their heads, they didn't know that it was on their own head unless someone else told them so. See, there were probably no mirrors in there. There were probably no, well, probably, obviously no cell phones with, with a selfie option for them to check and see if they had the fire. No, they had to hear it from someone else. It took someone starting in the room to say, oh my goodness, you have a tongue of fire on your head. You have a tongue of fire on yours and yours. And it just probably became this incredible ripple effect where people are like, Mary, you have it. You have the fire on your head. Thomas, you too. And they realized that the Holy Spirit was at work in their lives because someone else called it out and said, this is what's going on. And I just love that because I believe that we are called to do the same thing because so often it's hard for us to really recognize what's going on in our world, how God is working, how he's using us. You know, we can get discouraged or our vision can be clouded by, by almost becoming too close to our own circumstances, right? But when we have friends and family and people in our community that say, hold on, I know who you really are. I want to remind you of God's work in your life. I see him at work in and through you and you will have purpose. You have value. You're significant. I see the fire of the Holy Spirit upon you. That is powerful stuff. And that is what we get to do as a body of believers. We get to lift each other up. We get to call out the truth and the work of Christ in each other and remind each other of the value of continuing to say yes to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So my friends, this week, Maybe pick up the phone and call a friend and tell them, I see this in you. This is what I see God doing. Maybe write a note of encouragement or maybe even around your family dinner table, go around and encourage one another. It's so powerful. And those kind of moments continue to give us the courage that we need to continue to say yes to the work of the Spirit in our lives. Let's be encouragers this week.